Hello everyone and welcome to another problem solving session on Special Mass Academy. And today's video, we are going to cover the third problem from the Pan-African Mathematics Olympia 2021. So the problem goes like this and um, that us prove some kind of special property in the sequence. So we start the question now. So first of all, um, the initial conditions are A0 is A0, like the sequence A and PN are, are positive integers, an infinite sequence of positive integers. And also, A0 is greater than or equals to. So the reason why this may have been necessary was because of the second property here yeah, that PN is smallest prime divisor of A. And if not, if A0 could take value one, one does not have a prime divisor. So the um, second property is not going to be properly defined for and P not. So that was maybe why they said this. So now, um, the question asks us to prove this property. So what it actually means is that that's us prove this property is true for all n. I don't know. Could have been clear that they ask for all n. Um, for all n greater than uh, from some large enough values of n, this property is going to hold for all n greater than n, some bigger n size large enough value. So just for clarity. First of all, now a naught can take any value. So, but my claim, so this question, I'm going to solve it with um, a lot of, so the first claim is that, um, A0 or A1 is, so this claim is very straightforward to prove. So I'm just going to prove it now, the so proof. So if A0 is even, a naught is the only value you can choose. After that, all the values are determined by formulas or mathematical facts. So we can't like after you choose a naught our little degree of freedom. So if a naught is even, yeah, the claim is true. But if a naught is odd, then a one is going to be equal to a naught plus a naught over p naught. So because a naught is odd, p naught should definitely be odd. Because we can't have an even, we can't have two divided and odd number. So that would mean that this number is odd. This number here is also odd. So get an odd plus odd number for A1. So it's implied that A1 is even. That is the end of our claim one. Yeah, it's somehow necessary to do that because, as we see very soon, this is our first claim that A0 or A1 is odd. So um, let's so now, after we're done with that claim, let's just try and like um, see. What is let's just try and simplify some things in our question. So this property here that an plus one is equals to a n plus a n over p n, and write it as this. I think it's better if we write it this way. It's the same thing though, but yeah. What I'm going to do next is. Um, because either A naught or A one is um if one we can say yeah the statement we make is um maybe a bit unnecessary but I, I don't want to come as in case one when A naught is A one case two when A naught is odd because if we do that we just like solve two cases that are very similar we we'll just do it twice so what I'm going to like say is um because because either A naught or A one is even then we can say that there exists number r actually r is either zero or one such that so r can either be zero or one it's not only zero or one but it can either be zero it, like zero is a positive value or, or one such that ar is even so this fact is true because um i remember of what it means it is. So this fact is true because we have shown that either a naught or a one is even so okay positive or non-negative instead of zero so um so we can start um our sequence from that point arrow. And you notice that um it's still okay, like it can still be in line with what we want to prove. Why? Because what they ask us to prove, it starts from some large enough numbers. It doesn't necessarily um this n can be any value. So if they say maybe n equals to one thousand or hundred, we start okay, can must arrow be always less than cost hundred and things like that. But this n can be any value. So we I'm not so much interested in what this value of r is, but just know that r can be zero or one. R can either be zero or one, yeah. 
So from this point now, since AR is even, because I want to start from an even number. So since AR is even, um, we can write AR as 2 raised to power some numbers L times 3 raised to power some other numbers M times maybe T. So the way I define this T is like I'm where T and 6 are relatively friend. Um, so the reason why I did this is because like I kind of extracted all the powers of 2 and 3 out of T. So left with some numbers that may be relative prime. T may actually be 1. But regardless, T should be relative prime to 6. That's 2 and 3 basically, 2 times 3 C. So um, there's, uh, clearly there is a way we can arrange all numbers in this form. So and because A R is even, L is greater than or equals to 1. But actually, M may be 0. M being 0 means 3 doesn't divide AR. So M is a member of um, positive, non negative integers. Okay, but let's say L is a member of positive integers. Or M can be 0. It can be in, it can be 0. So it must not necessarily be positive. But L must be positive. Why? Because we say 2 divides AR. So now, um, so from this point now, let's um start playing. Let's start following the sequence. Let's see what we get. So now, if AR is equal to this, what is the value of PR going to be? PR is definitely going to be equal to 2. Because 2 divides AR, and there's no prime numbers one other than 2. So PR is going to be equal to 2. Now, AR plus 1 is going to be equal to AR 1 plus 1 over PR. So that is going to be equal to um, 3AR over 2. That is going to be equals to 2L minus 1 times 3M plus 1 times T. So now, um, so if AR is even, we know that 3 must clearly divide AR plus 1. But we didn't use that property in this. We didn't use that fact in this question. But my um argument now is that um if L is still greater than, if um L minus 1, is still greater than zero. That is, if L is greater than one, the smallest prime device will be what again? To still be two. Or we can keep on going through this process until we finish up um, the powers of two. Until you take out everything. Until this power here becomes zero. After that power becomes zero, some trees must have piled up. And um, after that, we'll be sure that this number will be um, the multiple of three. So the next prime numbers we start looking at are actually going to be the next value of p um subscripts is going to be three. Let's just um let's write this thing rigorously. So ar plus one is this ar plus two. But to follow the symmetry of this whole thing is going to be two l minus two. So this is kind of like an assumption because l can actually be less than possible. But let's just say l is large enough. And three m plus two and c. So you see that this is still going to go on until a probably r plus l. This is meant to be two. So this is going to be two L minus L three super M plus L times T. So this is going to be called what three M plus L times T. Remember T is relatively prime to six, so T is, is odd, and three doesn't divide T. So as at this point A R plus L, as at A R plus L now, we will have that. AR plus L is no more an even number. So it's now an odd number, but we are 100% sure now that um, 3 divides AR plus L because L, was, L is greater, see, M is greater than or equals to zero. L is greater than or equals to one. So M plus L greater than or equals to one. It means that this power here is at least one. So we must, we are sure that three divides this number. So because two doesn't divide this number, and three devices, what does that imply? That is that the smallest prime device of AR plus L, as PR plus L, is going to be cost three. So we'll just see this pattern and you see that I guess it's a bit interesting. So of course, PR plus L is equal to three. And what is going to be the value of AR plus L plus one? So AR plus L plus one is going to be cost AR plus L, one plus one over this, that is this. This is going to be four over three, A, um, R plus L. That is equals to 2 squared times 3 raised to the power m times t. 
So now for this number a r plus l plus one, so this is going to be cos this. So what is going to be the smallest prime divisor of this number? The smallest prime divisor of this number is not going to be three again. Why? Because we have like one plus one over three is four over three, and like the power of two here is, is, is clearly is, is a constant that is a number. So it's clearly greater than zero. So b r plus l plus one is actually going to be equal to two. Let's go to the next one, a r plus l plus two. It's not going to be so long, so don't worry. Um, when we do that, I'll see that it's going to be equal to um two times a m plus one times t. So the um b r plus l plus two still going to be cos 2 because 2 still divides this number. And um, um, I think I made a mistake somewhere around. So this is meant to be, I'm mistaken around. It's meant to be m plus l minus 1. It's meant to be m plus l minus 1. Yeah. Is meant to be m plus l minus one. Right? This um, this m plus l, then this one here, yeah, one of it goes off, and this one, no, this is meant to be m plus l because here yeah, is we are multiplying the previous number by three over two. So this is going to be m plus l, yeah. The power is going to be m plus l. So this also, um, then this number is um still even. So get that a r plus l plus three is going to be equals to this number is going to be equals three over two a r plus l plus two. That is going to be equals to three m plus l plus one. So we see that from these two, it's going to cancel out these two, and um we're not going to have um this number in a multiple of two again. So this one is going to be a r plus l plus three. So now, next up, it means that from this place, P, R plus L plus 3 is going to be positive because the powers of 3 have finished, like the powers of 2 have exhausted. So now notice that this point, 3 M raised by L plus 1, if you compare to A, R plus L, it's very identical. Just that now the power of 3 has increased by 1. And we can see that the way this um, algorithm is structured, after I'll do this the next time, we're going to get like a um, next value, A, R plus L plus 4. Cos to four over three this. So that'll be we get it's going to be cos two squared times m times three m plus l times t. Then from this, um, the next two values are going to be three over two of these, three over two of this. Um, then after that, um, like from here, um, okay. The whole idea of this question is, is, is to use induction to prove this question. Like the pattern here is very, very clear, especially from like after this point, we um, arrived at all this. So we're seeing that the smallest prime divisors are going to be oscillating between three. Then after it becomes three, we are going to do one plus one over three. And because this is four over three, then it's going to, we're going to get four somewhere around. So it's going to be three. We will now get the next smallest prime divisors, two, two for the next two, because that is two squared. So at this point, the powers of two have exhausted. And because these two points, like um, they add three over two, so they are bringing powers of three. So at this point, the powers of three have come up again. So it's now going to be three, two, two. And based on the whole way um, the numbers are arranged, um, you see that for each um three movements, the power of three is after um three steps, like that is when the smallest prime divisors are three, two, two. The power of three is going to increase by one at the end of that three step process. So we can do that um very easily by induction. And um, I'll I'll leave it to the viewers to prove that though. So um, it's very straightforward to do using a mathematical induction. We just have to go around it and just um see how it is. So if you keep on playing around this thing. You see that um, <laughs> as at this point, like after every three movements, the value we are going to get is going to be three times the um value three places before it. So that is indirectly what this question is asking us. As you can see for this, this example now, when n is r plus l, this is 3 raised by n plus l plus 1, and t raised by r plus s cos of this. So if you still go around with this, okay, let's just do it one more time. l plus 4 is equal to 4 over 3 times this number here, raised by r plus l plus 3. So this cos 2 squared times um, 3 raised by 
M plus L times T. So prime here is going to be equal to next value. This last time I'll just do this. It's going to be 3 over 2 times this value. Because the smallest prime divisor here is 2, so it's going to be 3 over 2 times this value here. Um, As equals to three, I'll be equals to two times three m plus l plus one times t. So two still divisors. Remember, two can like two and three can never um they are not divisors of t. So you see that from this point onwards, the smallest prime divisor of any number will get is either going to be two or three. That is how the way this is the way the question is structured. We are never going to get any smallest prime divisor of being like five and above. I never get that. Like after probably our first step, remember we did some things here. I never say, for example, now if you make A naught to be less than 35, the smallest prime divisor is going to be 5. So I think these are first steps. Um, from the way I arrange this question, from this point onwards, you can never get a prime divisor of greater than 2. Yes, last time. So this one is still going to be 2. Here is by R plus L plus 6. It's going to be plus 4. 3 over 2, yeah. 1 plus 1 over 2. It is per R plus L plus 5 is going to be equal to me. Yeah, the powers of 2 exhaust now. Um, we get 3 M plus L plus 2 times T. So we see that um, one will compare this. One compare this with this. This. See that there are multiples of 3 and um, like there are. The previous ones are the most at uh, the. New values you get are three times the previous one, one with step three. So I remember, like, um, you must not only compare this, like, compare a r plus l plus one with a r plus l plus four. Also, again, to get that, um, this number is three times this, all that. So, um, I'll just leave it to the viewers to try and prove this interesting property using mathematical language. And once we do that, we'll be done with our question. So the whole idea of the question was just to try to structure like the whole idea of the question was just to like um notice that if like once we have a number is even and get something like um one the whole idea of the question first of all trying to write this number in this form when we now have something like um if a number is even it automatically implies that the smallest prime divisor is going to be two so then because let's say um for some end the number is even so we're going to get one plus one over two here yeah? This is going to be called 3 over 2. Somehow 3 has already been involved. So from this point onwards, it's going to be almost impossible for us to have the smallest prime device of being bigger than 3. Why? Because if the smallest prime device is not 2, then it has to be 3 because 3 is already involved. And also, like when the um powers of 3, when the smallest prime device is a power of 3, um, you see that 1 plus 1 over 3 is going to be called 4 over 3. So two is now involved also. So it just swaps around between two and three. So either two is always involved or three is involved. So there's no way we can get the smallest prime by solving five and above after we after our first step. This is just how to do. just try to um use mathematical and just want to finish this up. Um, it's very straightforward, but I'll just leave it to the viewers. So this is all we have for today. They are the third problem in the Pan African Mass It's an interesting problem and yeah. See that this whole um sequence at the end of pass holds for all n greater than some large enough integers. And it's not just that it's not acting as proof just for only one specific integer, it's for, it's for all n greater than some large enough integers. I just want to clarify that at the beginning of the question. So we're done with today's problem and I'll see you some other time. So thanks for joining me today.